My name is Dr. Pam Kosla. I'm the Chief of the Division of Hematology Oncology and also the Cancer Committee Chair at Sinai for several years. So the concept of supportive oncology was in fact envisioned when the Institute of Medicine alerted to comprehensive care of cancer patients, meaning psychosocial distress screening should be a part of routine care. And this was almost 10 years ago. And um, since then, we collaborated with multiple institutions in town under the Coleman grant and funding to start developing ways to introduce this comprehensive care of the patient, especially focused on psychosocial distress and screening every patient and then providing that support, coined the term supportive oncology. Different institutions have different um, phrases for it, but supportive oncology seems to do fair justice in taking care of the whole patient, their psycho, social, physical, emotional, all kinds of needs. Cancer is a disease that affects every part of a person's life. A lot of people, their life is completely changed, their lifestyle is completely changed. So it's just not something that can only be addressed medically. We need to look at the whole person and see how the disease is going to affect their work, their family, their caregiving responsibilities, their financial situation, in order to really be able to treat them the best that we can. We take care of the patient from head to toe. What I mean by that is that in addition to their diagnosis, like ordering labs, treatment, imaging, um, starting them on treatment, we also take care of other things which includes um, social barriers, financial barriers, um, transportation barriers. So you really do get a chance to meet with the patients one-on-one, -on -one, and in some cases you meet their family members as well. Um, our patients do have a lot of unique needs, sometimes with understanding their disease state or the treatments that um, they're receiving or you know, supportive care issues that um, they need to manage at home. So there's a lot of um, I think need for the entire supportive care team to be involved with each patient. And delivery of care is a complicated process depending on your patient population, their needs. I mean, after we go through this comprehensive distress screen, which was again uh, drafted with the help of Coleman Foundation and academic collaboration with other institutions, it gives us a complete picture of what the patient is dealing with and what their challenges are in even getting to the center. And even after they get here, you know, financial challenges seem pretty obvious, but childcare issues, spousal issues, elderly care at home, and just loneliness for many patients and not having somebody to navigate them through the whole process. Being able to assist the patients uh, that are going through something as significant as cancer and being that person that helped them not think about the cancer part and getting those other services that they need is really rewarding to me because me being that bridge between the patients and the hospital and the healthcare system is real is really helpful um, being they being able to reach out to me more quicker than they are to reach out to the patients or the social worker. I'm a little more accessible to the patient. Just even bringing the patient in for treatment can be an issue, but after they leave, we still need to follow up in between cycles, especially after you know a tr new treatment has been started. Um, so with this additional funding, we can have more initiatives such as reaching out to the patients um, or arranging for you know like supplies that they might need at home or um, to bring them in for um, like an internal check if something has not gone right with the previous cycle. Most of our patients are not insured, so that's kind of hard for them to afford care, uh, treatment, medications. Um, that includes prescription medications as well that the doctors prescribe over the counter, anything that they need um, with the assistance of their treatment and care. Um, so if there was a grant or uh, extra funding uh, provided by the Coleman Foundation, it will benefit not only the patient but our facility as well. Through the funding that we've received through the Coleman Foundation, we've been able to see different ways that we can serve the patients and ways that we can improve the services that we provide them.
Some of the resources we've had recently include um, the distress screenings, which have been really helpful with identifying patients who might need some more assistance or might need some more time one-on-one -on -one, um, to help understand um, their disease or um, their treatments. And I think um, help with like funding um, from the Coleman Foundation with things like this will help us improve our supportive care initiatives as well as to develop them further. I think for a safety net hospital like Sinai, it is extremely important that we get funding and support from philanthropy organizations like um, Coleman because without that, the need is so heavy and especially for personnel to navigate those patients, support those patients. And so it's been a very, very fruitful journey with Coleman for almost 10 years now, from starting the building of the new infusion center at Sinai to continuing the supportive oncology, survivorship, all of the comprehensive care models for oncology. And without their support, I think um, we would feel isolated from academic institutions, which is, again, an ongoing quality improvement when you interact with quality and academia to try to achieve higher goals for your institution and for your patients. I think the support that we get from the Coleman Foundation will be really helpful to what we're trying to do in the support of oncology, to have someone like myself, a community health worker, to be there and be that bridge between the hospital system and the patients. I'm not just there to come up with a formula of like, this is what you need and I'm done versus have I gone above and beyond and to look at the patient as a person, as a human being, as a fellow in the community who could be a family member, could be me and would need that support in understanding prognosis, understanding what the future holds, what kind of help am I going to need. So I think holding hands is a simple way to explain it and makes you feel connected with your team, with your patients and really feel you are taking on that as this is my patients, my practice, my institution and my team.